Yes, good morning, my dear students. Today is direct and inverse radiations. As you have written, uh, as you are observing that already I have written that particular portions, direct and inverse variations. Now, first of all, I am going to explain what is the meaning of direct variations. There are two things, uh, two exercises are there. One for the direct variations, other it is for the inverse variations. Now, in the questions paper, it will not be mentioned that this is this question is from direct variation this is from the inverse variation after observing the language you should make a conclusion that this is from direct variations this is for inverse variations suppose if you can do that then the question uh, the portion is quite been simple right so one by one i am going to first of all explain uh, now today I am going to explain about the direct variations. Obviously direct and inverse variations both the things concepts I am going to give you now and few problems I am going to solve today based on the direct variations. What is direct variations? First of all I am going to explain that things here that what is direct variations? Direct variations. Direct variations. Direct variations means, suppose two variables are there. The question is that what is the meaning of variables? Variables means two uh, condition if it is given. As for example, suppose if I am going to uh, give an example that suppose few workers you have appointed for doing a works at your home. Suppose 10 workers you have actually appointed. 10 workers you have appointed for few days for few days I am not going to mention here that how many days and all ok you have told them that this works they will have to finish then they are asking you sir for that our charges will be our charges will be say suppose for doing that piece of work is rupees say suppose 1000 rupees Say suppose. Okay. Now in spite of 10 workers, suppose if we are going to use 15 workers. Now my question is, suppose if you are going to appoint in spite of 10 workers, if we are going to use 15 workers, then how much charges we will have to pay? Is it more than 1000 rupees or it is less than 1000 rupees? Obviously you can say it says more workers means more payment, less workers means less payment. That is, here more will come. More or less, I think it will come as 1500 rupees. Suppose these workers I am going to denote by the variables x and this one is denote, I am going to denote by y. When x1, when x1 is equal to 1500, uh, sorry, 10 workers, then charges is y1, which is equal to 1000 rupees. Now, suppose if X2 workers, if you're going to appoint, then their charges is coming as Y2. Now, I'm finding that if the workers will increase, the charges will increase. If worker will decrease, the charges is decreasing. So, this type of variation is known as the direct variations. And we are denoting in mathematics something like this. X is directly proportional to Y. This one you should pronounce as directly proportions. X is directly proportional to Y. Now this particular sign, this particular sign, if we are going to omit, then you can say that if we are going to omit and going to put her equal sign, then what you have to do? You have to multiply with a constant K suppose. What is K? You will come to know just now only. So therefore you can say that X by Y x by y is equal to always k. Is it clear? Now the question is what is this k? Now listen what examples I have taken here. Here when x1 is 10 and y1 is 1000 then how much it is coming? 1 by 100. When x2 is 15 and y2 is 1500 then how much will come? It is 1 by 100. 
So I am finding that these things are constant. <coughs> these things are constant. This is that k. So for direct variations, here is a formula. I am going to make a formula here for the direct variations that the direct variation is. So I have told you that whatever the value, whatever the examples I have given here, I am finding that x1 and y1, whatever the value is coming from this ratio, the same things is coming from x2 by y2. So this is actually a formula for direct variations. Okay, now I am going to explain what is inverse proportions or inverse variations. Inverse variations. Same thing, same things, two variables if are there, x and y. And suppose if it is varied like this way, that if x will increase, y should decrease. Or if x will increase, then y should. Uh, if y, x is decreased, then y should increase. As for examples, again I am going to consider number of workers. That one I am going to denote by x. Now in spite, in spite of wages, I am going to give you another variation, that one is days. And I am going to give this one with the variables y. Now, uh, what is happening here, uh, say suppose, as for example, I am going to give an example. Suppose 10 workers again you have appointed for doing a piece of work or cleaning your house or gardens. When 10 workers came to your house, they have told that we are going to finish that particular work in 10 days. Say suppose, say suppose. Now, what you thought that suppose if I am going to appoint, if you people going to appoint, in spite of 10 workers, you have appointed 20 workers. Then how many days they will finish? 10 workers will take 10 days time to finish the work. Then 20 workers will take the time less or more, obviously less. 20 workers less than. So you will find it will come more or less 5 days I think so. This is x1, this is y1, x y1, yes. And this is x2, this is, I suppose, y2. Now, inverse this, if, if x will increase, then y should decrease. This is inversely proportions. And it is denoted by this way, x is inversely proportions to y, 1 by y. This is pronounced as inverse proportions inverse proportions so now for omitting this proportion sign the same things what we have done in the previous one that you have to multiply with the constant k then what will happen x into y always will be equal to k then let us verify that particular things when x1 y1 x1 y1 is how much it is coming 10 into 10 which is equal to 100 and what is the value of x2 y2 see how much it is coming 20 into 5 which is equal to again it is 100 this is that constant this is that constant so for inversely proportions i am finding x1 y1 and x2 y2 both are equal so for inversely proportions the formula will be something like this that number two x1, y1 always will be equal to x2, y2. This is the formula for inverse proportions. These two formulas only you will have to use. Okay. Now the thing is that uh, you can say it is quite been simple. Yes, obviously it is quite been simple. But subject to the conditions that after read the questions, you should understand that if it is direct variations based on direct variations or inverse variations. If you understand that things, then use this formula. Here, out of the four, three will be given to you. Fourth one only you will have to find. Right? Only this much. Only this much. Not more than that. Okay. So, few questions from direct variations. First of all, I am going to solve.
So I think it is clear that what is the meaning of valid variations and inverse variations. Now I am going to solve few questions based on direct variations and inverse variation. Yes, it is given in your book as a 12A exercise. Two exercises are there. First of all 12A, then afterward 12B. Okay, now uh, exercise 12A. Okay, only there are uh, 15 questions. Just I am going to do it uh, in one class only. Okay, try to solve it. And uh, question number first of all one. Here one question it is given. Uh, observes the table given below, and in each case find whether x and y are direct proportions or not. Suppose I am going to solve one question here. Question number one. One. So make a table. Make a table. Make a table. This is x, this is y. Okay. And here it is given that 3, this is 9 is given. This is 5, this is 15 is given. This is 8, this is 24 it is given. And this is 11, this is 33 it is given. And this is 26, and this one is 78. It is given. So I am finding I, I will have will have to verify that if they are direct variations or not. In that case, what we we'll have to do? You have to find the ratio of x1 y1 and x2 y2, x3 y3. And if they are equal, then definitely they are directly direct proportions. So let us try to find first of all x1 y1 x1 y1 is how much? 3 by 9, which is equal to 1 by 3. Then try to find out x2 y2, which is, what is that? 5 by 15. 5 by 15. Again it is coming 1 by 3. Then x3 y3. Yes, obviously all the ratios you will have to find. 8 by 24, which is equal to 1 by 3. You can't say that 3 are equal means rest will be equal. No, it is not required. Okay, so you will have to verify all. That is x4, otherwise you will be trapped. x4 by 4 means 11 by 33, which is equal to again 1 by 3. And x4 by 4, x4 by 4, which is equal to 26 by 78, which is equal to Again, it is coming 1 by 3. So, therefore, it is direct variations. It is direct, direct variations or proportions. Whatever you want to write, write that thing. So. Suppose if any one of the four ratio, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, any one of the five ratio, if are not coming equal, say suppose here it is not coming equal, two are coming equal, third one is not coming, then in that case, you should not verify the rest of the things. Because one of the ratio, if it is failing, means it is not direct variations. This is about this particular question. Now, one more question, question number two. Now, uh, first one I have done. Now the question number two. In question number two, it's a little bit different one. Question number two. Question number two. A table again it is given. X, Y. <coughs> here it is given three. Here it is given seventy-two. This is given as X one by one twenty. This is given as x2 by 192. By means corresponding values of y. And then 10 corresponding value of y is given as y1. In this particular question it is given that x and y are related with each other as a direct variations. And in between few of the variables are missing from here. We will have to find that variables. So what we have to do? We have to 
write a statement here since it is it is direct direct variations variations so therefore 3 by 72 will be equal to x1 by 120 is equal to x2 by 192 and it is 10 by y1 now take this pair you have to find this particular unknown variables now for finding x1 just take this pair because out of this 4 3 it is given so therefore 3 by 72 will be equal to x1 by 120 so therefore x1 will be equal to 3 cross multiplications with a 120 by 72 okay now if we going to take the calculations it will come as something like this uh, okay 3 3 2 the 6 3 4 the 12 10 the 12 2 the 2 5 the it is coming as only 5 so x1 is 5 we have to make an index now take this and this pair so 3 by 72 will be equal to x2 by 192 so therefore i'm writing this segment x2 will be equal to 3 into 192 by 72 and now same way it is cancelling it is coming 24 and then afterwards with 24 it will cancel 192 and finally it will come as 8. I have taken already the calculations before going to start the uh, class. And now we will take the last pair that is 3 by 72 will be equal to 10 by y1. So naturally y1 will be equal to 10 into 72 by 3. It is coming as 24 which is equal to 240. So therefore we can say make an index here that x1 is equal to 5, x2 is equal to 8 and y1 is equal to 240 and that will be your answer. Okay, so this is a set of questions. Now I am going to solve another question which is based on some language. Yes, from here onwards some uh, this type of problems will come that if it is from which lessons direct or inverse variations so this way you have to make a judgment so let us try to solve another question one question number six I have selected so now I'm going to solve question number six yes just read the question question number six read the questions all of you if 18 doll cost rupees 630, how many dolls can be bought with rupees 455? Okay, 455. So what is what is that? If number of rupees will be more, number of dolls will be more. If number of rupees less, then number of dolls you will purchase less. So dolls and rupees are directly proportions. Number of dolls, money. If it will increase, money will increase. If number of dolls decrease, money will also decrease. So it is directly proportional. So what you have to write here, since question number six, since x1 number of dolls, initial number of dolls, it is given as question number six, 18 dolls, 18 dolls, and y1. How much amount you are paying for that? 630 rupees 630. You have to find x2. Put here question mark. And y2. How much money you have? 455. For 455, how many dolls you will get? You can solve this question by unitary method even also. Okay, but here it is given on based on the direct and inverse variation, so I am going to solve that particular formula here. Okay, since since it is direct 
proportions. So therefore formula x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. Now put the value. x1 is 18, y1 is 630. And x2, we are not knowing, keep this one as it is. And y2 is 455. So therefore, take the cross multiplication, 455 is coming here, and x2 you will get directly. So 18 into 455 by 630. Now, you should take the calculations. I think you can take the calculations by yourself only. So it will come as, uh, it will come as 30. So number of dolls you can purchase with rupees 455 is 30. Because money is less as compared to 630. So you are not able to purchase more than 18 dolls. You can purchase less than 18 dolls and which is coming 13 dolls. Right? <coughs> now, uh, one or two more questions I am going to uh, solve. Questions number which I am going to select will be questions number 11. Questions number 11. Uh, what, it, what it says, yes, why I have selected? Because the number it is given in a, uh, some typical way. In 8 days, the earth picks up 6.4 into 10 to the power 7 kilogram of dust from the atmosphere. How much dust? will it pick up in 15 days? Our earth is actually absorbing certain quantity of dust. I don't know that from where only the dust is coming. You can ask that one from your geography teacher. Right. So it is given that in 8 days, this much quantities of our uh, dust, the earth is absorbing. So in 15 days, in 15 days, how much dust, uh, how much earth uh, absorb the dust. So number of days will increase, number of dust it will absorb by earth will be increased. So it is direct variations. Right. So what you have to do? You have to write our first of all data x1, y1, x2, y2. So x1 number of days, the first number of days it is given as 8 days. And quantity of dust y1 which is given as 6.4 into 10 to the power 7 kilogram. See, this is in scientific form. Scientific form means after one digit decimal should come. That I have told you already. And X2. X2. Number of days. It is given 15 days. And in 15 days, how much dust will accumulate it to earth? We are not knowing. You have to find that. Since it is direct proportions, since it is direct proportions, therefore x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. So therefore x1 is 8 by y1 is 6.4 into 10 to the power 7 is equal to x2 is 15 and y2 only will have to find. So after taking the cross multiplication, find the value of y2, 15 into 6.4 into 10 to the power 7 by 8. <coughs> 8 eights are 64.8, which is equal to 5 eights are 44. 12.0 12 into 10 to the power 7. That is, you can say 12 into 10 to the power 7 kilogram of dust the earth will accumulate. Now, one thing I am telling you, this is not in scientific form because after one digit, a decimal should come. In that case, if we want to put here 1.2, 1.2, definitely that 1.2 means here you have to write 10 to the power 8 kilogram. 
So this much of dust you can accumulate in 15 days. Okay. So this is, yes, you can ask, if, suppose if it is a live class, yes, then definitely you people are going to ask, sir, if we are going to keep the answers here only, is it the correct one? Yes, it is correct one. But suppose if it is coming nowadays, there is a trend that uh, finding the answers, four alternative answers, you have to select one of the answers. So naturally, these answers will be given to you. And you are getting this answer. So what you are going to say? None. None of this. No. So you should know these things. But suppose if it is subjective questions, then you can put the answer here, you will get the marks. Okay? Now one more question, the last question I am going to select, that one is question number 14. Number 14. What it says, 11 men can dig 6 3 by 4 long trench. What is the meaning of trench? Trench means it is a type of, um, you can say, the tunnel where the soldiers are actually um, uh, sitting there or sleeping there during when, when some war is going on. Anyway. Uh, 11 men can dig 6 3 by 4 meter long trench in one day. How many men is required uh, for digging 27 meter long trench? That is, if the trench length will increase, number of persons will increase. If the number no, trench length will decrease, number of persons will decrease. If we want to finish it in the same days. Okay when one day. So let us say, so that naturally you can say that this is direct proportion. If main will increase, number of trench will increase. If main will decrease, number of, uh, that is length of trench will decrease. So let us see question number 14. So x1 it is given as 11 and y1 it is given as 6, 3 by 4 meter, 4, 6 or 24 plus 3, <coughs> 27 by 4 meter and x2 uh, how many men will require I don't know and uh, number of uh, length of the trench when it is 27 meter how many men will require that one you have to find so as I have told you that this is direct proportions so since it is direct proportions direct proportions so therefore x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. So x1 is 11 by y1 is 27 by 4 will be equal to x2 you are not knowing by 27. Now take the cross multiplication the things will come out. So x2 is equal to 11 into 4 into 27 by 27 which is equal to I think 44 men will require to complete the work okay so this is about the direct proportions and this much it is sufficient for today next day the inverse variations